Well, hello and welcome to yet another edition of Let's Turn This Box Truck Into an RV. This is kind of a follow-up because we're pretty much done with this project, but we took it on a trip to North Carolina from Wisconsin, and I just wanted to go through a couple of uh, observations along the way. So, let's get started. First off, we put on 949.9 .9 miles, uh, roughly 950 miles. And uh, we did it over two days and we left on uh, Monday morning and Monday night we spent in a Walmart parking lot somewhere in Kentucky and that worked out very well. And then Tuesday night we arrived here in North Carolina at this beautiful piece of property. So, we're spending a couple nights here. Actually, we're going to spend four nights here, and it's a neat place. But, uh, enough about that. Let's get back to the box truck. Uh, fuel. Oh, whoops, uh, hit the horn there. Fuel. Uh, I calculated that I got just about eight and a half miles per gallon. So, going 950 miles, do the math, we burned up 110, 120 gallons, something like that at uh, just shy of four dollars a gallon so it took us eh, uh, just shy of three dollars a gallon it was about 279 so it, it it cost us a good 300 to 300 or more dollars to get down here uh, we got to Dubuque and the check engine light came on so that kind of freaked me out uh, Crystal was driving the Jeep here I was driving the box truck so I didn't tell her, of course, and uh, I got a little concerned, so I kept a close eye on the fuel and the oil pressure gauges, and oh, about 400 miles later, the check engine light went off. So I'm not going to lose sleep over it, at least not right now. Okay, what else can I tell you? Mileage sucks. It handles really well, though. Uh, cruising speed, uh, just usually shy of 70 miles an hour, and uh, it, it handles it handles like a truck. I mean, it's it's big and bulky, but uh, all in all, I really didn't have any troubles driving it. I was pretty comfortable for the most part. There's armrests in here, and I got a hula dancer to keep me company. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this reverse or backup camera. Uh, without this backup camera, I don't know how you would survive. Uh, you know, with this thing, you can see what's behind you. Without it, this is uh, pretty pretty blind driving so that's that come on out Duke's found a good comfortable spot Duke drove with me the whole way and he's a trooper we're uh, parked along a creek and uh, the first thing he likes to find is the creek and get wet and cool down so I got the uh, generator running back here we're charging the battery right now and this is working out just great. You can see I've got a shore power cable here plugged into the generator. Uh, we're running at 13.62 volts. And the battery charger is plugged in right here. Here's the charger. And it's running a little bit warm, but uh, that doesn't surprise me. So anyways, we're charging. And I've got the house circuit plugged in as well. The inverter right now is turned off. It's not needed. So we're running the refrigerator and such off of uh, off the generator, as well as charging the battery. The battery charges up pretty quickly. Just got to show you what we're into back here, our beautiful little spot for camping. And Crystal found a whole bunch of mushrooms, some chanterelles, and some bolites in the woods, and she's trying to figure out what we've got. But back to the lecture at hand. So we're charging the battery. Uh, everything's worked out great here. This storage compartment works out very nicely. We got a bunch of stuff under there. Come on around to this side. We got the LP gas locker here. It's so warm I, sh I don't need the furnace so we're not not worried about heating. And come on in the side. We brought a nice little flower from home. All the comforts of home. The porta potty has worked out just great. Uh, we stop at Walmart or stop at uh, any place with a real toilet to take care of number two, but for number one, this has worked out just great. 
and I've got a little coffee maker up here that we made some coffee with this morning and been running this fan quite a bit we haven't used the TV at this point use the lights in here got some music going and you can see right now we are at 92.2 percent charge so last night overnight it came down to I think about 67 uh, percent I really don't want to take it below about 50 percent although I'm sure I could without any problems but that's just kind of my rule of thumb I just want to keep it at about 90 I uh, keep it above 50 percent so I can change this right now you can see we're charging and it's pushing 15.6 amps into the batteries and uh, I program this for 200 milliampere hours uh, excuse me 200 ampere hours on the batteries I don't really know the capacity of my batteries I think they're probably more like three four hundred but again I'm being very conservative so when I program this I told it my batteries were 200 ampere hours and so right now we're at 185 ampere hours and if you do the math that drops us at 92.4 percent charge and on the top here you're seeing the uh, the voltage and uh, so this is all working out really well furnace we haven't needed the furnace there's a USB port here and I've got some black tape over it just because at night time these little blue LEDs just lit the place up uncomfortably so a little black tape just sh shades the, uh, the brightness of the blue LEDs same thing over here there's an LED on this switch and an LED on this little charge wizard and I put a little piece of tape over those as well it's surprising how bright a little LED can be in, in uh, total darkness and, and I like the total darkness so that's I don't want to say a problem but yeah, a bit of a problem fan up here has worked out just great it's not running right now don't need it it's it's uh, pretty comfortable in here and what else uh, overall this trip has exceeded my expectations everything is working pretty much as planned ah there's one thing that's not this top drawer works just great but the second drawer down jams up and you need two hands to get it open and that's not all when I was on the road both of these drawers popped open when we hit some bumps and uh, I ended up putting a bungee cord around them to keep those two drawers from sliding open so they banged open a couple of times and even the cabinets up here came a couple of them came open uh, again on the bumpy roads so once I got off the road I had to close the cabinets and close the drawers and I think uh, all the jostling around is what kind of knocked this door out of uh, out of alignment so I need to adjust that drawer otherwise all these cabinets are just working out just wonderfully got a little fan I mounted in the corner there I think it's really noisy it's a 12 volt fan I guess if I had to do it all over again I wouldn't have mounted that this little electric 110 volt fan works just great and uh, helps keep a little breeze going at night time so that's a little a little about about our first real trip welcome to North Carolina thanks for uh, thanks for watching these videos thanks to all the viewers and subscribers uh, I've really enjoyed some of your comments and uh, and I hope you get something out of uh, out of these videos so I'll say until next time so one last thing I want to share with you is uh, when I first purchased this box truck way back in December of 2016 I stopped at a certified automated truck scale and put the truck on the scale at the Flying J in Altoona Iowa and you can see the front axle I had 3,160 pounds, back axle 5,680 pounds for a total gross vehicle weight of 8,840 pounds. So anybody want to guess where we ended up after the build out? Well let's find out. On our trip down to North Carolina we stopped in Shelbyville to Indiana 
and we were there on July 9th of 2018. The front axle I actually lost about 400 pounds as all of the weight was added to the back. The back axle went up to 9,140 pounds for a total gross vehicle weight of 11,860 pounds. So we picked up about 3,000 pounds through the course of this build. And what's my takeaway from this? Well, if I had to do it all over again, uh, would I try to use more lightweight materials? Probably not. Uh, you know, if I were to save a pound here or a pound there, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to make enough difference to really count. You know, whether I'm at 10,000 pounds or 11,000 pounds, it's going to be a heavy truck, period. Um, it, it's uh, obviously pretty heavy though. Uh, it's weighted down and going through the hills and mountains on our way down to North of Carolina. Coming up some of those hills it kind of chugged along. Uh, but it made it just fine. It really wasn't an issue. Just had to bring the speed down a little bit and uh, let it shift to a little higher gear and make it up the hill. So that was one last thing I wanted to leave you with. Thanks again for watching all these videos. Bye.